here at the NFL Combine on One Bills Live. Coming to you live from Indianapolis. Time now for us to turn to head coach Sean McDermott, who joins Steve and I here for our number two. Coach, it is good to see you and actually sitting next to you. I, I don't. I, I got tired of seeing you on the screen. I mean, it was good to be able to talk to you that way, but this is far better. It is very nice to have you here sitting next to us on the show. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm great. Great to be here in, uh, in Indianapolis and get this combine kicked off. Came in yesterday, had a good trip, and, um, you know, so we're ready to roll here. We got it, – it, it, offseason took off really quick. Dayball's gone. Now he's a head coach in the Giants. You had to make some shuffling. It just – that's the way it works. You got to yeah. – how do you – because you're really – you've been really good right from day one of building a team, the guys on the team, the guys that are the players, the 53-man rosters, has, has been cohesive and a lot of love and respect in the locker room. How do you do that with your new coaching staff and, you know, the, the fact that you have to tweak it a little bit all the time? Yeah, uh, you know, first and foremost, like, let's, let's give credit where credit's due. Dable, all the, all the coaches and staff that moved on um, – you know, are accomplishing some of their career goals also. So right. and that come, that's a result of, of, winning, uh, of winning games, right? And, and so happy for them and their families. And, and it wasn't just Dable, Joe Shane, um, so, sure. so others as well. Um, but it left a lot of voids on our staff, uh, uh, as many as I've ever been around in, in one off season. Right. And, and, right. But sometimes change is good, right? And sometimes you, you, you come with new, they come with new ideas, a fresh outlook, perspective on things. And Boy, it took us a long time to get the guys in, 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 in the positions we, we hired them for. Um, so really an exhaustive search, did our due diligence, feel really good about it. Um, and again, just that fresh perspective I think will be good for us. Two of the new coordinators were internal promotions, you know, in Ken Dorsey and Matthew Smiley. In, in what ways, Coach, because, you know, Ken Dorsey is not Brian Dable and vice versa. Every coach is different. In what ways might the offense unfold differently, if at all, under Coach Dorsey? Well, he's going to put his own signature on it. Um, you know, certainly there's a lot that we want to carry over because of the success we've had, the success in particular that Josh, Josh has had, and his comfort level with, with Doris was a big part of this decision. Um, but there's also another level that you're always trying to get to as a, as a team, as an offense in this case specifically, and I'm anxious to see where that leads us this offseason with, with Ken Dorsey's um, leadership, but also some of the new pieces we added amongst the co- coaching staff alongside of Ken Dorsey as well. I know that you, you said it was an exhaustive search, but it must be a little bit rewarding and perhaps maybe a part of your overall message that you did promote from within a couple of those spots. You, you let right. guys, you earned it. They, you've seen their sacrifice. You've seen their production it means something to this organization and probably to you personally it's your philosophy that you want the guys that did it under you to to reap rewards and have your program reap rewards for it yeah you want to be able to do that that's that's uh that's one of the primary goals of hiring is that you can promote from within um for a lot of reasons not only because it helps morale but it also helps just in terms of the investment a club makes into a staff member Uh, a young staff member to watch them grow develop and now they have to do their part also you know we don't just hand things out but those you know jimmy salgado promoted from within uh matt smiley promoted from within uh ken dorsey as we already talked about promoted from within there's a lot of good that comes with that uh as well and it happened for me and and there's nothing more you want to do as a head coach than to, to be able to do that every offseason if it, if it presents itself. Right. So, Coach, you mentioned you have some new additions to the staff that you have to kind of ingratiate into the process, so to speak. Maybe take us inside how that manifests itself through the course of an offseason. I guess what I'm getting at is Aaron Cromer's a new addition on offensive line coach, Joe Brady as quarterback's coach. How do they work with Ken Dorsey to kind of blend all of their coaching expertise together so you've got – a well-oiled scheme to to present to the players when they are back on the field in May. Yeah, and that's and that Chris is one of the unique challenges that you have when you hire a new staff, uh, and then also when you have a new coordinator. So you've got a new leader on the team within the team on the offensive side in this case, and he has new pieces. It's not like he was promoted from within and everyone around him was still the same right. uh, around right. him. So. So now what, what has to happen is, is, is Coach Dorsey leads his, his team and they 
kind of put things in a chronological order of, hey, let's tackle this thing in this order. Like we're going to, I'm going to get everybody on the same page with what we do. And then let's get into the ideas that, th- that they bring to the table after that. Um, because, again, we've done a lot of good things offensively. Um, but then there also are some things that you can, you can always improve as you go. And how healthy is that? give and take the dialogue in the room amongst those guys. I mean, obviously, Ken Dorsey is leading that, but, you know, he's, he's taking input, right? There's give and take there. Yeah, and that's, that's part of why you make the hire. It's not just, hey, this, this coach is going to, I think, project to a great play caller, but there's leadership parts of that, of that move as well. There's uh, managerial parts of that move. There's, there's chemistry that are parts. So uh, there's a lot that goes into it, and you've, now this is Coach Dorsey's first time. You know, right. we've all had our first time right. in, in a leadership role, and I can tell you you're better with experience, and no matter how prepared you are. And, and so I love the fact that Coach Dorsey has take, taken a very humble approach to it. He listens um, to Coach Cromer. He listens to his staff because they are bringing different ideas from places they've been. And, in fact, it may be better than what we're doing mm-hmm. in, in doing that. It, it, it fosters good collaboration, right. communication naturally, and then it doesn't matter whose idea it is. At the end of the day, you right. go with the best idea. So you, you did promote these coaches from within, and, I, and I'll just say it this way. You promoted another guy from within. You gave Josh a kind of a voice in this offensive coordinator. So he you know, said, oh, who do you want? Yeah. You know, or at least you said, what's your opinion? Sure. And he gave Ken Dorsey his, his approval, and I think I want to get your thought about the benefit of not only giving Josh a voice, which he's earned, I guess, right? I mean, he's an elite quarterback in the league, and he deserves to know, want to know more about the offense. But secondly, too, it gives him some ownership. Now he needs Ken Dorsey to be successful. Um, there's a lot in that, that promotion from within, and I think giving Josh a voice is it heads off some of the things you've seen around the league in Green Bay, you've seen it in Seattle, you've seen it in now in Arizona with their quarterbacks given him a voice this young and his early in his career at the time when you've extended him now he's going to be here long term what's that say about the atmosphere inside the building and yeah i mean josh is josh specifically josh to that point has grown in leaps and bounds on the field yes everyone sees that off the field uh, as well and that's the part to me that's one of the more exciting parts of our team is not that he wasn't a leader before but the way he led this football team down the stretch in particular, the lessons the team learned through the season we just went through um, will help our younger-ish leadership group really really lead the team going forward, Josh being a huge part of that leadership group. Um, and you're right, the ownership, giving Josh the ownership because he has earned it, I think is critical. You, you watch around the league, you learn um, how things are evolving, right, around the league right. in, that, in that sense. So, um, and... At the end of the day, I wanted Josh to be extremely comfortable with who we put in that chair. And, and I could tell you he is comfortable. And, look, things are going to be, have to be you know, worked out as, as Ken and Josh develop that relationship as it relates to the play-calling relationship and because it is different than being the quarterback coach. And, and, I, and I can tell you going through it on the defensive side, um, for the first time as a coordinator, it's different. Yeah. And, and so it's going to take both of those two being willing to communicate and listen and, and just, again, do the best thing for the team at the end of the day. And, and, I, and I trust that they will. Right. Coach, I know Brandon, back in his season wrap-up press conference, was asked about Tremaine, his responsibilities within the scope of the defense. Steve and I very often on this show, have to come to the defense of Tremaine Edmonds. I don't know why, but we do. Mm-hmm. I don't know that we always do a great job, which is why I'm going to ask you this question, because it seems to me that there's a portion of the Bills fan base that is looking for something that I can't quite put my finger on with regard to his play. And I know there are times where you can see Tremaine, and again, this is an untrained eye watching this, where he might have two gaps that he's got to choose, choose in a split second to make a play, and he doesn't want to cheat one way or the other, or otherwise it's a big play. And I don't know the scope of the defense and how it specifically works for him, but what Brandon said was he's got a lot on his plate, which we all understand calling the defense. Is there a way for you to maybe pull some responsibility from him to maybe 
maximize what he can do on the field for you? Is there a way to devise that within scheme? Well, I think you always look at that. <clears throat> excuse me, Chris. You always look at that for every player, every offseason. How can we take what seems complex and make it simple? That's what coaches we are tasked with, right? You as a coach, I know you coach as well, and myself as a coach, right? So you you try and take what seems complex and simplify it yeah. so that it's exec- executable, right? Executable in, the, in, in a fast way on the field because the position Tremaine Edmonds plays, things happen fast. And when you're two and a half to four yards away from the line of scrimmage, the closer you get to the line of scrimmage, the faster things happen. Mm. And so whether it's run game, pass game, he does have a lot on his plate, calling the defense, leading the defense. I love the progress he made this this past season. Uh, Mm -hmm. When you look at the passing game, um, he was more productive in terms of matching the routes. um, And so he continues to grow, Mm -hmm. and he is still a young player. It's hard hard to believe that in year four, right? Mm -hmm. But he is still growing, and he's only going to get better. And so um, I'm excited to see him come back this this off season and and the year he's going to have going forward and quickly coach just the the free agent destination that buffalo is you've sold it the success of the team is speaks for itself but quickly what's been the feedback that you've gotten over the last couple of years from free agents as to what makes buffalo so attractive we know what it is i'm curious what the players are saying to you when they yeah. consider buffalo yeah it's a great question chris you know coming to buffalo in 2017 um a lot of it was new for me. I hadn't played, coming from another team, hadn't played the Bills, you know, being in the NFC and up, up to that point in my career. Sat down with, with this man beside both of us right here and some of his teammates and got a pretty good feel for what this place really is, you know, at its heart, at its core. And then I would constantly hear this thing of, hey, um, Buffalo's our secret. You know, you know that type of that type of. You see it on T-shirts, right? Mm-hmm. Printed on T-shirts. We one of our goals was to make the Bills again relevant to the point that people wanted to come here. They wanted to play. They wanted to play for the Bills, and I think that's huge. And we've done that, and it's but it's also been because of the people. Like people want to come and play alongside of Josh Allen. Yep, right. People want to come and play alongside of. The Tremaine Edmonds, the Micah Hydes, they want Stephon Diggs. I mean, I could right. go on probably half of our roster, right. you know, and it's that's really who helps build the culture, and and I think that's 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 an added component to where we are now in the last couple of years versus where we were when we came in, and uh, that just makes life all that much right. easier. Yeah. Coach, thanks for stopping by. It's great seeing you again. Enjoy the combine. Yeah, I appreciate it. Look forward to. Uh, Spending some time here, and I'll see you guys Sunday, right? You're here through Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> we're on the road, yeah. and we're driving back. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. No problem. Thanks, Coach.